Warning. Warning. Hey, I'm Bob with Laguna Tools. Around here they call me Router Bob. I wanted to do a special video for you today on machining aluminum. People don't realize how easy it is to machine aluminum on a CNC router. And I've selected one of our entry level models, the Handheld Control IQ, the IQ HHC. We've got the machine set up. I've got the aluminum placed on here. It's 6061, it's 316 thick. But before we cut it, let's go back into the office, look at the drawings, and let's talk about the special things we have to do to machine aluminum with a CNC router. Before we get started on our part, let's talk in more general terms about machining aluminum on a CNC router. It makes a lot of sense, primarily because the work envelopes on CNC routers are so big. If you look at a metalworking machine and you use a metalworking mill to machine uh, aluminum, it's way overkill because the mill has to be really heavy to handle the loads of machining steel. Well, aluminum doesn't have those kind of loads. It's much more like wood or plastic. So I don't have to have a really, really expensive machine to have a big machine. So I can easily cut sheet aluminum, uh, nested parts, whatever, on a CNC router. So it makes a tremendous amount of sense to use a CNC router to cut aluminum. Let's contrast the difference between machining aluminum and wood. All right? Think about wood. You can have two pieces of wood of the same species and one's hard and one's soft. So there's a lot of variability and there's actually quite a, a broad area that you can machine wood and have pretty good results. Now, you may cut one way and your tools may last longer. You may cut another way and you don't have to sand as much. So there's quite a range there. Now, aluminum, that little range is very small. There's, you don't have, if you go too fast or too slow, the results are terrible. So we have to pay much more attention to the tooling part, the feed rates, and the spindle RPMs to make this work well. There's a couple concepts when you machine aluminum that you need to understand. One of them is called chip thickness. And you can think of that as how thick a chip is when the, the cutting edge forms it. The faster you go, the thicker the chip is. So we want a chip a certain thickness. If it's too not thick enough, we have problems. If it's too thick, we have a problem. All right, so that's one concept, and once again, that's controlled by feed rates and also uh, by spindle RPMs. Now, the next thing that we have to think about is how fast is the edge of the tool going through the material, and that's called surface feet per minute, and it's directly related to RPM. So really, the numbers I need are how fast do I spin the tool and how fast do I feed it, so I get that chip thickness the right amount. All right. So then there's one other thing that we have more problems with in aluminum than you do wood or plastic, and that is a bit deflection. And what happens if you cut too deep, all of a sudden the, the bit starts flexing. So those are really three things that we look at. Now let's talk about another uh, aspect of this, and that is the maximum depth of cut per pass. Okay, Let's think about wood. In wood, typically you can go two times the tool diameter. So if I use a 3 8 diameter tool, I can cut through 3 quarter inch plywood in one pass, all right? When you cut plastic, the maximum depth of cut is the tool diameter. When you cut aluminum, the maximum depth of cut is half of the tool diameter. So in my case, I'm going to use a 3 16 tool because I've got some geometry that takes that small a tool. So I can only go through about half of that per pass. So on a 3 16 plate I'm going to cut, it takes two passes. Okay, so if now, if I have to worry about depth of cut and I want to worry about edge finish, it's obvious I'm going to have to make a rough pass and a finish pass. So ideally, what I'll do is I'll, you know, I'll make a rough pass and probably leave 30 thousandths of material and do whatever number of passes it takes to, to, to rough that out. Then I come back with a, a finish pass that takes off the 30 thousandths and I do it in one pass and that gives me a great edge finish. Okay, now there's another aspect of aluminum that we don't experience in, in really wood or plastic for that matter, and that is lubricating the cut. Now, sometimes you can get by without it, but typically that's not going to produce a good edge. 
So there are a couple ways to do it. What we're going to do here in our little demo here is we're going to use a special cutting fluid made for aluminum that they use in machine shops. We're going to put it on the surface and that gets down in the cut and it lubricates the cutting edge. It keeps the cutting edge cool. It makes the chips form and it creates a really nice edge finish. So we're going to use that. Now, if we were doing more production, we might put a mister on there. And we sell those as an option on our CNC routers. And what a mister does, it basically has a little air nozzle that puts a, a real fine mist right on the cutting edge. Once again, it does the same thing. It keeps that cutting edge cool and it gives you better edge finishes. Okay, now let's look at the simulator and we'll, we'll go through how the process we're going to actually see on the machine. So there's our blank, right? And actually that's the, the material table itself. Okay, so we've got some holes. We're going to machine those holes first. You can see where those are. There's the holes. Okay, then we're going to cut some shapes I call slots. Once again, we're cutting through those. And then there's some other shapes that are for hooking the panel onto something. And actually, when we get to this stage, you know, that's all scrap, so. So now what we're really ready to do now is to cut the outside. So the ed outside edge finish is what I'm the most concerned about. So let's, let's stop and take a look at that. First thing I'm gonna do is do a rough pass. Okay, in the rough pass, I'm, I'm cutting 10 thousandths through, so the material's 0.1875, and I'm gonna cut through at 0.1975. I'm using a 3 16 O flute tool, and we'll look at that a little closer when we get to the machine. All right, I'm going to cut on the outside. I'm gonna do that in two passes. I'm leaving 30 thousandths. And at 30 thousandths is, is, once again, I'm doing multiple passes, so I, I'll, I'll be able to see that. So I wanna, I wanna be able to leave a really nice edge finish on there. I'm, and I'm using a conventional cut to start with, and that's to get the chips out so they can't be recut or can't melt. All right, so we'll do that, and then once that's done, once we get that tool path done, then we'll do a finish tool path. And the finish tool path is the same geometry, same tool. This time we're doing it in a single pass. We're gonna climb cut to give us a better edge. So that's really the only difference. And that technique works for a lot of different things. So when we rough cut it, let's go back to our simulator, and we'll see that. So that actually cuts it out. And then our finish pass gives us that edge that we're looking for. So if everything works right, we ought to get a great part. Okay, let's talk about this router bit before we start machining. This is a special bit for aluminum. It's called an O flute. And it's hard to describe. If you look at the end of it, the, the gullet in there is just kind of a, a curved shape. And it's, it's made that way so that it causes the chip to form. Because remember, our, our whole point of this is to form the chips and get them out of there. There's, where, there's quite a lot of upsweep. You notice the cutting edge is very short. Rule of thumb is you want the shortest cutting edge you can get by with because that reduces vibration which reduces deflection. So that's basically what we started at. We're going to put some lubricant on here and let's run this part. Okay, before we start, let's talk a little bit about safety. I'm going to be wearing safety glasses. I'm also going to have the dust collector shroud removed from the uh, spindle so we can see it better. And I'm also going to use an air hose and, and try to keep the chips blown out.
boy, it came out really nice. The, looks like the edge finish on that outside really came through with that finished pass. That's neat. Everything worked out just like we planned. You know, it's amazing uh, what you can do with the CNC router. What a beautiful part. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I wanted to show you something else you could do with a CNC router besides just cut wood or plastic. If you have any questions, call us at 1-800-234-1976 or you can visit us at www.lagunatools.com. Thank you for watching.